Deion Shadow, Sierra McCord. Alright, what it do y'all, this your boy Pat coming at y'all once again and welcome to another episode of Shoutouts. Now, this shoutout right here is a very special one because we're shouting out my girl, Sierra McCoy, also known as Eternalized Misogyny in our channel right now. Now, I met Sierra back in 2015 when I started studying on the whole feminist SJW narrative and why so many of them are batshit crazy because I had an encounter around that time with one of the, I'm saying, one of the brainwashed indoctrinated uh, feminists who basically spread the whole you know thing you know sexism misogyny patriarchy i need to and is the greatest all that whoop de whoop and stuff like that so it's like i just you know got on youtube started doing a whole lot of research i found a whole lot of channels and i ran up on sierra's channel where you know she was just talking about a whole lot of things and you know when i checked out a lot of her content find out that she used to be a feminist like yes right here used to be a feminist it was until basically you know she met a lot of people who talked about the whole anti-feminist and you know talking about men's rights people like the amazing atheists like how she mentions in this video right here you know you know like when she met people like you know like amazing atheists you know um thunderfoot and all that right there that she started seeing things from a whole different perspective and she started seeing like how you know radical and crazy that you know the feminists can get so and she was like I don't want to be in that no more. Now she spent a whole lot of time, you know, talking against the radical feminist and SJW narrative that they like to spew a whole lot. And, you know, it was a great channel. Awesome channel. Then all of a sudden it's like just like that, she disappeared. And she was like gone for like damn near a year. And I'm like all this time like, what happened to Sierra? She used to make such good videos. And, you know, and all of a sudden it's like what? Last week? She just popped up out of the damn blue, out of nowhere, after the whole Lacey Green, you know, red pilling thing went down. And she had came out with a video basically, you know, asking like all the YouTubers, mainly the big YouTubers, like, where's all the skepticism when it comes to Lacey Green and how she's talking about she's opening herself up for, um, you know, conversations on the other side and all this right here. And everybody is just like so willing and quick to accept her and all that right there. And so she brought out that video. Also, she, you know, she explained the reason why she's been gone for so long. Excuse my phone right there. That, you know, you find out that, you know, um, that she's working and it was hard for her to make videos. And also, she's pregnant. And to that, I say, congratulations, Sierra. Like I say, you know, I, I wish y'all the best of luck. You know, the baby comes out healthy and fine. And I know you're going to make a great mother because you have such intelligence and such great common sense and you know all that right there and i wish you better luck and everything in the future and also in that video she mentioned that you know she wasn't coming back she wasn't going to make me videos because she felt like she are she had said everything that she had to say so i think you know she's going to keep her channel up but it's like she's just done with videos right there and right i also say you know like it's been good knowing you. I loved all your content. I love all your videos. And we're going to miss you. And maybe, who knows? Maybe she'll come back in the future. Maybe not. It all depends on her. But for right now, I just say, congratulations, Sierra. You know, you're going to be a great mom. You know, and all that right there. And this is your shout out right here from your boy, Pat. Thank you for all the videos that you've made so far and all that right there. But to give you all a little taste of what I'm talking about, if you don't know who she is already, here she is. Sierra McCord, a.k.a. Internalized Misogyny. And this is your boy Pat, as always, saying, peace. And I'm out. Let's do it, Sierra. So, Emma, Mattress Girl Sulkowitz, released a sex tape. Yep, you heard that right. The Mattress Girl, the girl who claims to be a victim of rape, the girl who spent a whole year publicly shaming the accused by carrying around her mattress, the girl who feminists are hailing as some kind of hero, she released a sex tape. In the description, before the tape, she makes a half-assed explanation that the tape is some kind of art project that is not meant to be a reenactment of her rape. And what's really funny is in the description, she says, if you watch this without my permission. If you watch this without my permission. It 
takes a special kind of stupid to put a video on the internet and then use the phrase, if you watch this without my permission. Now, I don't care to read you guys the whole description because it's obnoxious. I'll link it in the description if you really want to read it. What I want to focus on is why I think Emma made this sex tape. And make no mistake, this is a sex tape. This is not an art project. This is straight up amateur porn. And I use the term amateur porn lightly because even the shittiest amateur porn is nowhere near as boring as this porno was. But I digress. I think with this art project, Emma Solkowitz was indulging in a fantasy that most women have and they just won't admit it. Rape fantasy. And, at the same time, I think she was satisfying a second urge. The urge to do pornography. But Sierra, I hear you ask, if all she wanted was to do rape porn, why didn't she just do rape porn? Why the false rape accusation and, cl and claim this obvious porno is an art project? One word. Feminism. Feminism has been taken over by sex-negative Puritans like Anita Sarkeesian, who seem to think that any sexual act between a man and a woman is some kind of violence against women. Emma is a feminist who has bought into this sex-negative narrative, so what is she to do? If she becomes a porn star, her feminist sisters will turn on her. And if she admits she enjoys rape fantasies and indulges in them, her feminist sisters will turn on her. And, as we have seen, feminism is a very lucrative endeavor. If you keep yourself on feminism's good side, you can make bank as a professional victim. So why should Emma want to risk her feminist sisters turning on her? So what's the solution? How can Emma indulge in her desires while keeping her professional victim status? Accuse a man of rape. Ride the controversy by keeping herself in the spotlight with her stupid carry the weight project, and then, right after she makes headlines by carrying her mattress across the graduation stage, she films the porno. A rape porno. She slaps a half-assed explanation about how it's an art project meant to draw attention to the issues of rape, and boom. Emma gets to indulge in her fantasies, all the while giving feminism an excuse for her sexual exploits. That way, she gets her pleasure, and she gets the attention and potential monetary rewards for her victimhood agenda. What I'm hoping for is this, that she will lose all the support she's getting from most of the media. Once the average person finds out about this, common sense will take over and they'll realize there's no way this woman is a rape victim. No rape victim would film a rape porno, especially not so soon after the alleged rape. And once she loses support, I hope she finally faces consequences for her actions. This woman is pure evil. She has ruined a man's life for her own selfish desires, and she doesn't feel even the slightest bit of remorse. She's riding the controversy like she rode that guy's dick in her porno. We can only hope that this porno backfires. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Next time we shout out, Miss Osa there.